Today, my wife met my girlfriend. I, 32 male, am a widow. My wife passed away from pancreatic cancer five years ago. She was forced to leave behind our two kids, R, 10 male, and H, 7 male. My wife was the absolute light of my life. We were high school sweethearts, went to the same college, and got married after graduation. We were inseparable. Every day, I fell more in love with her. It was like my heart was living outside my body. When she passed, the amount of pain I was in was indescribable. I prayed to go to sleep and not wake up just so I could see her one last time. I contemplated meeting her, but every time I was ready, my kids would look at me. They had her face, her personality, her DNA. I couldn't leave them. They were all I had left of her. It took years before I was able to function normally again. I even quit my job and lived off of savings from her life insurance for about a year. I was half the dad I used to be and only a fraction of my former self. Two years after her passing, I decided enough was enough and I kicked myself into gear. I found a job in a different city, closer to my parents. I packed my kids up and I moved. Life was hard, but I kept chugging along and eventually I found some joy. A year after moving, I took a business trip to New York where I met my current girlfriend, Elle. While I acknowledged there was chemistry, I told her I was already married and she understood. However, a few months later, I had to go back to New York where we met up again. I let my guard down for the first time around her. Before I knew it, she was putting in a transfer from my home branch and moving to my city. I fell in love with her and asked her out a year ago next month. My kids adore her and though she reminded them she will never take their mom's place, they love calling her Mama L. Today was the anniversary of my wife's passing, an extremely hard day for all of us. This morning, I walked into the living room to find Elle and my kids waiting for me. The kids were dressed in their church clothes with goofy smiles on their faces and bouquets in hand. Apparently, Elle came up with the idea of a picnic at my wife's grave, an idea that the boys loved as they enjoyed going to see their mom. While I was sleeping, they prepared food and flowers, then insisted on wearing their best clothes. I'll admit that I cried at the sight of them. I don't know how I got this lucky twice in a row. I wanted my wife to meet this amazing woman, so I asked Elle to come along, and she did. The day that I dread every year turned out to be a humbling reminder of the reason why I stayed on this planet. To my lovely wife, you can never be replaced, but she is good to me and she takes care of our kids like you would. Thank you for sending her to me. I broke up with my boyfriend over the 2B Super Bowl commercial. I, 23 female, broke up with my boyfriend, 25 male, over the reaction he had to me over the commercial. For those of you who are unaware, during the Super Bowl commercials, 2B, a streaming app, played a prank where they made it look like someone was changing the TV over to their app. I'm sure that in many households it caused chaos and was a funny event, but not in mine. My boyfriend thought I was the one changing the channel and began screaming at me violently calling me things that I don't even want to write down. Even as I told him it was a commercial, he ignored me and kept blowing up at me and punched a hole in our living room wall. He eventually realized what actually happened and awkwardly apologized, but I was so disgusted over his reaction to a 15 second commercial. I feel like if you can't keep your anger in check and get that violent over something so small, I don't want to be around for it. We'd been together for over a year, living together for the past two months, and I've known him to get angry at things sometimes, but this really took me off guard and I can't forget how unsafe I felt around him during this. In the morning, I took some of my things and I'm now staying at my parents' house. I left him a note telling him how I felt and that I didn't think we were going to work out long term. He's been messaging me and calling me repeatedly. My parents told me that I'm overreacting since he had a bit to drink and the Super Bowl gets everyone riled up, but I don't feel that I am. I don't think it's normal to be that angry. Am I wrong for making homemade food for everyone except for my brother's stepdaughter? I, 27 female, am not a professional chef, but I have taken a bunch of cooking classes and love making elaborate meals for friends and family. About two years ago, my brother Greg, 25 male, married Cheryl, 34 female. Cheryl has a daughter from a previous relationship, Becca, 9 female, who has several health conditions, including celiac and a severe dairy allergy that requires her to carry an EpiPen. Last weekend, I hosted a dinner at my house for my parents' wedding anniversary. I made a fancy five-course dinner, and in addition to my parents, I invited our close family friends. Greg, Cheryl, and Becca, and my sister, her boyfriend, and their twins, both eight. Because of Becca's food restrictions, I found a restaurant in town that specializes in gluten-free, dairy-free, as well as other allergen-free food and arranged for them to make a full meal for Becca that I could pick up in advance of the party. I have made a variety of specialty meals in the past. For example, keto meals when my friend was following that diet, and I liked the challenge, but knowing how serious Becca's restrictions were, I didn't trust myself to make her meal. I have ADHD and get easily distracted, and if I even used the wrong spoon or didn't completely wash some flour off a bowl, it could make her incredibly sick. 
I thought the takeout solution was fine, but when I served the food, I saw Cheryl looking at Becca's plate with a stony face. For her part, Becca started eating and seemed fine. Cheryl whispered to Greg and Greg asked if he could talk to me in the kitchen. When we got there, he said that it was unbelievable that I couldn't be bothered to make something for Becca, that they'd been bragging about what a great cook I am to her, and that he knew I'd make keto, vegan, and other complicated kind of foods in the past. Now she would feel left out because she didn't get to eat what the rest of the family was eating. He said that it was obvious that I didn't care about making his stepdaughter feel like a part of the family and that they were leaving. Greg, Cheryl, and Becca then left, which put a damper on the rest of the party. I feel like I I did my best at the time, but in hindsight, I wonder if I should have tried harder to make Becca feel included since she was a relatively new addition to our family. So, am I the asshole? I'm going to have an abortion because my fiancé cheated. I'm 29 female and he's 31 male. We've been together for 7 years and engaged for 9 months. To keep a long story short, I found out my fiancé was cheating on me when I was 10 weeks pregnant. He has slept with multiple women for what looks like the last 2 years. I never wanted children, but he really wanted to be a father. After the initial shock of finding out he was cheating, I had to think rationally. Could I really let myself be tied down to this man for the rest of my life? Could I trust him to raise a child with me? The answer was no. I gave him the best years of my life and I wasn't going to give him any more. I knew I'd resent the child. I just wanted to move on and never see him again. I told him I was going to get an abortion. He begged me not to. He apologized and said we could work it out and all he wants is to raise a family together. He swore I'd be a great mom and he'd be a great dad. He said if we didn't work out, he'd be there 100% for the child and that he could be the one with full custody and I could have visitation. I told him that my mind was made up and that he should have thought of that before cheating. He threatened to sue me if I went through with it. My parents weren't on board either. They say they're pro-choice, but they think that me getting an abortion is purely for revenge and not for the right reasons. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I can't have a child with this man. Not after this. I can't do it. I can't even carry the baby and give him full custody. Why should I put my body through this after what he did? Why would I give him what he wants after he's ruined me? It's scheduled for next Friday. There's no doubt in my mind that this is what I should do. No one but my sisters and close friends seem to agree with me. My male friends are against him. My ex-fiancé is still begging me not to and I know he's speaking to a lawyer. The next week isn't going to be easy but I'll do what I have to. I gave this man the best years of my life. I gave him everything I had and everything I could. For 7 years I've loved him unconditionally but I cannot have this child with him. My wife is dead. The best Christmas gift I could have gotten. At the beginning of 2022, I caught my wife having an affair with one of her exes. Our marriage wasn't perfect, I was not the perfect husband, I will admit, but I did my best. I put effort into the entire five years we were together. I put my all into the relationship. Her, I could not say the same. I was forced to confront the reality of who she truly was shortly after I caught her. She illegally evicted me from our shared home, lied to the police to try and get me arrested, tried to get me fired from my job, and tried to turn all of my friends against me. Some of these succeeded while others did not. She made my life a living hell since the day I asked her for the divorce and has planted her heels into the ground over our separation to try and drain all of my finances and emotional strength from me. The only upside is that we have no kids for her to use as weapons, but I soon found out that her policy of strict birth control with me did not extend to her suitor as he got her pregnant 5 months ago. I thought maybe this would help speed along the divorce, but it only railed her in efforts to destroy me. On Christmas Eve, my wife and her suitor went to a party where both of them got drunk. I find this fact terrible as all of her friends knew she was pregnant as well. Her suitor drove them home, a mistake that would cost them both their lives. In the state I live in, our divorce is now considered to never have even started. I will be able to claim her life insurance policy for myself and move back into my home. Her parents called me up distraught yesterday, acting as if the last year had never happened and offered their full support to my funeral preparations for her. My confusion here was beyond belief, but the apple does not fall far from the tree when it comes to my wife. I told them if they want a funeral, it was coming out of their pockets. I will pay for her to be cremated and deliver her ashes to them in the cheapest urn offered if they desired. They called me horrible and tried to guilt me about her life insurance, but only after 4 minutes on the phone with them, I hung up and blocked every one of her family members. I'm going to be taking a few extra days off work to move back into my house over the next week. I've already made arrangements to have her stuff hauled off so my home will be an empty canvas to start my life anew. I don't know if there is a god or this was just karma, but I truly believe now that I have come out on the other side of the storm. 